Hi, this is Teresa Jackson with a quick tutorial about Photoshop text. Text layers are added with a type tool. You can jump to the type tool with a T on your keyboard. I'll do that now. That jumped me down here to the type tool. There are two types of type tools, horizontal type and vertical type. For this tutorial, I'm going to stay focused on the horizontal type tool. Text can be added as point type or area type and either can be styled with character and or paragraph attributes. Let's take a look at what these are. I'm going to single click on my document here to create some point text and I'll title it or I'll just write title and subheader. And then I'll click the check in the options bar to commit that. We'll come back and style this text in a minute. Next I'm going to create some area type. An area type is created by clicking and dragging out. And as you drag out, it looks like you're creating a marquee selection. But as soon as you release, that turns into an area type container box for text. You can go up to the type uh, menu option up here and fill it with lorem ipsum text. We'll see how that looks. But I don't want to actually use this text because I have some better text that I've copied to my clipboard from the website Cupcake Ipsum. I'm going to do a Command V to paste my Cupcake Ipsum text. The first thing I want to do with this body copy is pick a more modern sans serif font. Now as long as my text layer is selected, I'll open my layers panel here, the Cupcake Ipsum layer is selected. The font or the text isn't actually selected, but as long as the layer is selected, you can get a preview of the font change as you scroll through the font options. And up here where it says filter all classes, I can change this and just look at the sans serif options I have. So I'm going to pick Arial and take the font size down a little bit. If I hover and click right um, on top of the T's here, I get a scrubby so I can quickly scrub through font sizes. Let's take this to about 14. Yeah, maybe we'll take it up a little bit from there. Text can be styled with the character panel, the paragraph panel, or in the options bar. As long as you are on the type tool, you'll have type styling options in the option bar. If you don't see your character panel and your paragraph panel, you can find those under the window menu. Now let's look at some ways we can style this paragraph text here. I'm actually going to take uh, the font size up. I'll select all of this and then just select inside the field where the um, font size is and type in 20. And that dropped the word chocolate down to the next line so I don't have that hanging widow of the word bar. Now I can control the space between the lines with letting and that's the next field here. By default letting is set to auto meaning that it will increase or decrease according to the font size. I want to spread those lines out a little bit so I'm going to type in 28 points. And now we have some um, air between these lines which I like. But keep in mind if you change your letting to a fixed value it's going to stay at that number um, as you change the font size. So if I take this font size back down to say 12 points, the space between the lines or the letting is still 28 points. So if you want the spacing to move along with the font size, you need to leave it set to auto. I'll take this back up to 20 points. And I'm going to go ahead and click the check to commit this. Letting adjusts the space between all of the lines. You can adjust the space after the last line in a paragraph using this field here. This icon means space after. So I'm going to type in 10 points here and hit the tab key to commit that. Now you can see the separation of paragraphs here. If you have multiple paragraphs of copy, this is always the best way to create that space between your paragraphs. It's much better than adding an extra return. This field will indent the first line of the paragraph, so we'll put a six points in there. 
These two fields add space either on the left side or the right side of the area that the text fills. If I select all of this text, we can see the area type frame here. If you had a reason to shift the text from the edge of that frame, this is how you would do it. If I type in 25 points, we'll see all of that move over. I don't really have a reason to do that, so I'm going to leave that at zero and commit this text. Now let's take a look at the title and subheader, which I created with point type. Even though I created it with point type and not area type, many of these style options will still work. Photoshop sees a paragraph as anything that is between returns or the enter key. So I type title and then I use the enter key on my keyboard to drop me to the next line and then type subheader. So if I select this, this text here and add point after for paragraph, I can actually separate those two lines. So it can be confusing because I can do the same with the letting up here. If I select all of this text and crank up this letting, that will also spread those apart. So now I have the space between title and the space between subheader created with two different settings, which can get confusing. So I'm going to go ahead and set this one back to zero. And I'll take this tighter so that the subheader and the title get closer. And I probably should have done this after changing my font size because, again, once I um, put a number in here for letting, it is going to be fixed. Let's go ahead and center this type, and I'll use the options bar to do that. And then I want to make a much bigger font for the title and pick a bold font. I'm going to use the option bar here to pick bold, and then I'll crank up this font size so that it's a lot bigger. And I'm going to have to move this whole layer down. And I can do that while I'm still in the text tool as long as I hover slightly outside. Notice that my cursor changes. If I'm in here, it looks like a text insertion point. If I hover out here, it looks like an arrow. So I can click and pull this down a little bit so that it's inside of the document. And then I'll go ahead and commit that. I should do the same with the paragraph um, text and move that. Actually. What I'll do is I'll, I'll change the shape of the area type. So this is the other benefit of area type versus point type. I can change the box that this text fits in and it'll reflow accordingly. It's not scaling the font or the text, it's reflowing it to fit the shape of this. And it looks like I need to take my font size down a little bit in order to get it to fit to this. So I'll select all of it. Actually, I'll do a Command A. That would be a Control A on a Mac. And we'll take this down to, say, 16 points. I don't like this hanging widow down here, this single word on the last line. So I'm going to adjust the container for this text again. I'll click on the edge out here and pull this in. Now it's important if you want to adjust your area type container that you need to be on the text tool because if you try and do this with the move tool it will actually scale the font which you don't want. Then I'll click and just kind of move this over a little bit. When we're done I'm going to show you how to center all of this. I'm happy with that so I'll click the big check. Let's go back to the title. I'm going to select the title and look at some character styling options here. If I pick this third one, it will give me all caps. If I pick the fourth icon, it will give me small and large caps. And this is the look that I'm trying to create here. This field is called tracking and it will add space between the letters. So if I select title and click on the options here, let's take this up to 25. And it spread the letters apart equally. This field here is called the kerning, and it works a little different. You want to put the insertion point where you want to create the space just between two letters, not all the letters. And I want to tuck the I under the T. So I'm going to take the kerning down, and that will shift the I over under the T. I'll select the subheader and add some tracking to it so that it fills the width of the title. I like that look when the letters are spread apart like that. 
And then I think I'll select all of that and take the letting down a little bit so that they're tighter. 24, that looks pretty good. Then I'll click the check to commit it. Now that I have my text the way that I like it, I want to make sure that it's centered on the document. So I'm going to open my layers panel here so that we can make sure that both of these layers are selected. I have the title layer and the paragraph layer. I'm going to select both of them and then I'm going to do a command A to select everything and that would be a control A on a PC. If I switch to my move tool I have an option here to position these. I'm going to pick this one which will center everything on the document. So in conclusion, if you're working with text in Photoshop, make sure that you open your paragraph and character panels so that you can see all the options available. They're not all available in the options bar, but if your character and paragraph panels aren't open, you can jump to them from the option bar with this icon right here. So I'm going to click on this and it will return those panels where I last had them.